You ever make a payment of 600 bucks or better or get a payment Venmo to you for 600 bucks or better? Well, the IRS wants to know about that. The only question is why it wants to know about that. David, uh, I don't know. This just seems like a Trojan horse way to get some money. I could be wrong. What do you think? Well, I mean, I think it might be worse than that, not just to get money, but to get information. But obviously, the reporting you guys have is exactly right. Nobody in the right mind thinks the IRS is going to capture meaningful revenue by looking at what babysitters get paid and what uh, college kids send their buddies for beer money. I mean, this is absurd. <laughs> the The way to move the needle is in much larger um, measures. And of course, this does, as uh, Senator Paul said, uh, get away from a sort of innocent until proven guilty. It starts requiring people to validate things that are totally outside of the IRS's purview. But David, it has already prompted me to you know, change my mind about sending my son money at school, at college. Um, so I said, you're on your own, pal. Uh, and I'm wondering if people are going to be very leery now of, of just typical transactions that they've had because the IRS might be looking over their shoulder. Well, I think there is a, a school of thought there that, that some people will have a greater paranoia. And a lot of it's justified, not because there will be scrutiny or people really getting upset about uh, sending your kid money in college, but because there's no credibility. The public trust is not there. It goes back to a lot of the things with Lois Lerner, Lerner and, and the Obama administration. Um, nobody believes the IRS is apolitical. Nobody should believe that. But I, I agree that in this particular case, the real issue is cost benefits trade off. Whatever they have to do by way of time, effort, resources, cost, if they find a few bad actors who are stacking, which I'm very skeptical that there's that many, but what they do collect in additional revenue to Treasury is going to be meaningfully less than what it costs to get it. What business would ever make that decision? So yeah, privacy concerns, constitutional concerns, public trust, all to end up losing money in the endeavor. David, what is going on there? That, that, that just seems uh, you know, counterintuitive, or maybe I could see a lot of people who shored up their finances, got in better shape during the pandemic. Uh, they're maybe reassessing things, I get that, but it can't account for all of this, month in and month out, people dropping out of the workforce. No, it can't and it doesn't. This is a cultural issue, even more than economic. I know that some people want to believe that people's Robin Hood accounts and crypto accounts have all of a sudden enabled them to add 30 years to their retirement capacity, but that isn't really the, the issue here. Um, we are moving away from being a work-based society, and it's primarily at the very young end and the older end. It's not so much there in the age 30 through 55 demographic. Mostly the labor participation force erosion since COVID is coming in the same area where it did after the last financial crisis. And that's people uh, into their late 50s and 60s, and then at the younger end, and in both cases, I think it's a cultural epidemic, not merely, Neil, for the economic consequences, which are severe, which do create labor shortage, which exacerbate price inflation, which force the president of the United States to apparently say incredibly stupid things. But it's an awful thing spiritually, morally, culturally, existentially to have people not working, to not having that purpose and that joy that comes from being engaged in the workforce. That's my concern. I'm wondering how long it lasts, Dave. What do you think? Um, I think that there will be some economic catalyst that helps bring it to an end. And then I think that a good portion of it could play out for a long time. And that, and what I mean by that is those people that are going to need time to realize that crypto mining is not going to become their career and their life purpose. And, and he's right, though. That's on the younger end. Uh, I don't think there's 61-year-olds or 58-year-olds that are able-bodied and had planned to keep working and have now left the workforce. I don't think they're crypto mining and starting a new dot com or what have you. I think some of them, maybe they get bored. Maybe they, they just decide this whole thing wasn't meant to be the way they planned. But what I'm getting at is it's not going to be in the data. And it certainly isn't a federal problem. It's a cultural issue. And we should be encouraging the idea that going to work brings more than just a paycheck, that it brings purpose and activity.